There's a really old story called King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. They want to find the Holy Grail, so they sit at their round table and create a strategy. They're going to split up and search into the darkest parts of the forest. Tronic was published 11 years ago, and despite over a decade of development, our community has time and time again shattered our collective expectations about what is possible and what is not. This map was never intended to be completed consistently, let alone at the speed we see today. The route currently run by top surfers is unrecognizable in comparison to the runs of a decade past. Tronic shows us that the future of surf may be in the very places we don't want to look. What is Tronic? Tronic is Sangre Nueva's magnum opus. It was also a major step up in difficulty, beatable by very few surfers and none very well. It was actually released as a jail map, granting entrance only 20 tries before being sent to a minigame. It's likely that not even Sangra understood the depth of this map in late March of 2010, seeing the map as an absurd test of technical skill. Due to its short length, we will briefly cover the map in its entirety. It starts with an awkward board into a small hole, forcing a tight spin or a loss of all speed with an S-tap. Next, a slight flick into a box, followed by a b-hop and rather complicated spin. If all before went well, another b-hop and wide spin granted access to the ramps below. A tight 180, b-hop, and slide led to another tight box spin. Another b-hop led to this beautiful room, one of the most iconic on the map, featuring a b-hopable waterfall and a long wide spin to four awkward ramps. This downward ramp signaled the start of the hardest part of the map. After leaving and reboarding, surfers weaved under the glass floor onto four ramps around the box, leading to a blind board underneath. Another tight angle led to one last reprieve, a b-hop platform that faced a set of four long and confusing spins, and at the end, the tightest of gaps led to an extremely awkward board on the ramps below, which, if successfully boarded and flicked off of, led to the last difficulty. Three windows on each vent barely bigger than the player model. The rest of the map was free, down to the ramp below before a b-hop pipe and one last b-hop to end the run. By modern standards, Tronic isn't a hard map, with over 500 completions to date. Its four-way mirrored style, four identical map sections, meant that surfers had many routing options. But in 2010, the precise spins and difficult technical aspects made simply completing the map a major achievement. Unfortunately, information about this period is few and far between. The earliest confirmed run is by Habitat, a legendary old-school surfer who previously held rank 1 and many world records on KSF servers. His run isn't pretty, but perfectly captures what was expected during this period. After the second b-hop, he turns too quickly and smacks his head into the ceiling above, losing lots of speed, and later wastes several seconds in this awkward area before the long white spin. Otherwise, the run was a pretty vanilla completion of the map. It was followed up immediately by Nim the next day. Nim's run had minor improvements, head surfing a dodge to the ceiling, but b hopping the spine below, losing lots of speed. He also had a markedly better time in the hardest part of the map. It's hard to tell which run was faster, I had to manually time them which reduces their accuracy, but I have Habitat at 5092 and Nim at 5068, placing the latter slightly ahead. We also see Morning on Tronic, the first to be omnific on KSF, Morning's run is the largest recorded improvement in Tronic's history almost 8 seconds to 42.16. He's also the first to do three major skips that would be used for the next decade. While he S-taps on the first hole, which loses speed, by skipping the first b-hop, Morning goes directly into the second, additionally maintaining his units on the ramps below. Then, he skips the next b-hop and goes directly into the slide, unfortunately S-tapping and not spinning to gain speed. Lastly, Morning is the first to go directly into the long white spin. By skipping the b-hop, he maintains his downward velocity, making the next section more difficult but saving a lot of time. Unfortunately, neither Habitat or Morning would see appearances on Tronic in the coming years. It goes without saying that our next contender is the main character of this story. Being one of the only surfers from his region, achieving rank 1 during his peak, and attaining hundreds of world records throughout his career. Further, our elusive protagonist would routinely disappear often for several months, only to suddenly re-emerge and shatter records by some of the greatest runners of all time. Since his 39 second run was the first in a saga, each breaking barriers and masterfully adopting the ideas of others. His checkpoint one is faster, and although he doesn't do the slide skip, 
he generates enough speed by spinning to perform the water skip, avoiding the waterfall and falling faster. On top of other small optimizations, Senza does something strange and uses the last bit of ramp after this ridiculous spin, a risky strat to end the world record run. At this point, our story gets a little weird. There's a huge gap in information between 2010 and 2013. Based on my research, the only surviving recorded run on the map is by a player that goes by the name CatDog. If this run is legitimate, it would symbolize an enormous leap in progression on Chai. On top of that, the video is very much outside of convention within the surf community. Slow-mo, color adjustments, and even on-screen song lyrics, which I can't let you hear because of copyright. A far cry from the clean and perfected aesthetic of modern surf videos, yet this was the first recorded instance of two of the most important skips in Tronic's history. First, CatDog performs an edge bug in an area that should normally fail you, which might have made the run inadmissible on KSF servers. Edge bugs are very precise, forcing surfers to clip the edge of a flat surface while crouching. This temporarily slows your descent and maintains horizontal velocity. This allows him to skip the second b-hop entirely, saving tons of time and units. Second, CatDog performs one of the hardest skips on the map not b-hopping but crouching on the box for the windows, rapidly spinning and completing the first ever window skip. However, I can't in good faith claim this run is real. I have no way of legitimating CatDog's run, and although it came out after Tronic NJV No Jail version was released on KSF, the run could also have been tasked or spliced to appear legitimate. I can't even time the run because of all the slow-mo. Ah, I see, it was edited by a Call of Duty YouTuber, that makes sense. Regardless, these strategies are now publicly available and ripe for the taking. On March 12, 2013, Sinza retakes the record with a 3796, with the first proper b-hop skip on checkpoint 2. Not only was the b-hop difficult to avoid with a precise weave, but the ramps below were even harder to board. His transfer for the long white spin was more optimal, lower but still enough units to perform the first ever confirmed window skip. Altogether, he saved a second over his run in 2010. It took 8 months for the record to be broken, and in February 2014, Nim would return to Tronic with a 3754. While Nim's run lacked novel strategies, he improved on Sinsa's route with more units after the major b-hop skip and a lower entry into the white box spin. Then, interestingly, a new name appeared, one perhaps less known than the other legends of Surf Tronic, Virtual. And if my research is correct, Virtual is the first to complete one of the most important skips on the map the direct window skip. At 37.4, his run seemed far from perfect, even messing up water skip and likely losing half a second. After the crouch hop and spin, Virgil maneuvers himself into the window without touching anything. With this alone, he erases his earlier mistake and takes the record, and he would soon after fix this error with a clean 37.169. The record would bounce between the two again, with Nim's flat 37 and Birchall's 36.7. While I can't decipher what happened with his run, we do have Birchall's CPR, so make your best guess. As always, Sinsa took his time, waiting another 8 months to make his attempt. And on September 12th, 2015, Sinsa set the first sub-36 with his 35.984. And further, this run marked the beginning of Sinsa's dominance on Tron. For the next four years, he maintains an iron grip on the map, repeatedly taking his own world record without contest. In the first, while a little messy prior to the window skip, he hits his first direct and employs a much lower end on last surf in VHOP. On April 19th, he lowers the record by another second. He's slightly faster after the first spin, has more units after the second VHOP skip, and uses this to skip the slide, saving massive time. He also has a better board and lower angle into the long white spin, with a direct window skip on top. Finally, on March 22nd and April 4th, he lowers the record three times to 33.899. He has even more units after the b-hop skip, skips the slide, and head hits, giving downward velocity faster. Only possible because of a plugin called RNG Fix, which can be used to generate units on certain inclines. While now looked down upon, back in 2019 it was seen as legitimate and made the next skips possible. He then behops the edge of the ramp after water skip for the perfect angle. At this point it was inconceivable for another surfer to steal the record. The run was 40 seconds of complicated technical skips and improving was unimaginable. 
Despite practically retiring from surf, Sinsa had maintained seven amazing world records, runs that could not be beaten by even the most active pros. These maps were Crow 10, Curious, Legendary, Ixtab, Unreal 2, the amazing Juiced run that featured the most elusive end skip, and most importantly, Tronic. However, the day before his Tronic run, Rank 7 Finnish surfer, Kush, had taken Unreal 2, and in the coming months, Curious, Legendary, and even Juiced would fall to other top surfers. Of all Sinsa's records, Tronic seemed to be the safest run by far. That is, until a rogue surfer would establish himself in surf history, and subsequently start a war on its most technically demanding map on the most competitive server in surf. On October 25th, Otter sets his 33-794, finding a razor-thin margin between him and the record. His run featured three unique strategies that altogether saved him just a tenth of a second. First, Otter uses a different start strategy, entering the first hole lower and intentionally colliding with the wall for a perfect angle. The next was also an intentional collision, smacking the beams above the white box spin. This slowed him down and likely made the spin easier. Most importantly, Otter does something amazing opting to never S-tap above the downward ramp, weaving wildly before the board. This saved time off flicking and gave him a relatively low angle of entry. And then that she got yoinked! Legendary surfer Nim makes another return, this time with the smallest lead I've ever seen. He and Otter's runs were essentially equivalent, 33.79, meaning the improvement was less than one thousandth of a second. Nevertheless, Nim improved again just two days later. The run included all of the aforementioned advancements in the record with minor improvements. Despite a suboptimal CB1, he has a better turn after the B-hop skip, uses a different head hit than Otter, and has a cleaner end with 100 more units. These minor advantages granted him 5 hundredths of a second and the world record. But the gods had awakened. Sensu strikes back with a 33.7 flat six days later. He is an insane checkpoint one, lots of units off the start, and even more after the b-hop skip. The rest of the map is actually a little slow, with small improvements on the end. With 60 more units, Sensu b-hops one of the railings on the side, b-hopping sooner and getting just a few more units. He went on to lower the record again the next day to 33.688, before an explosive 33.554 from Nim just hours later. Although we don't have a ton of info from the run, it appears as though his improvements came from checkpoint 3. On the final day of battle, November 9, 2019, Sinsa capped 11 straight years of blood, sweat, and tears, with one of the most impressive runs of all time. On checkpoint 1, he leaves as early as possible from the first and second ramps at the cost of units. Despite this, he has 1930 units after the b-hop skip, more than any of his runs prior. Surprisingly, he loses 7 hundredths of a second between the water skip and no S-tap, but it didn't matter. With perfect spins before and after the window skip direct, he leaves with well over 100 units more than the previous world record, getting a great board after as well. At the end, he hits the final half pipe and leaves with almost a thousand units, hitting the NB hop on the side and setting his long-standing 33.4. For 11 years, Tronic was molded by the gods, whittled down to almost perfection. The record had passed between legends, Habitat and Mourning, with guest appearances from Otter and Birchall before the final clash between Sinsa and Nim. And Sinsa was victorious. What have we learned from all of this? The evolution of Surf is contingent on pushing boundaries. On Tronic, we had to not only develop absurd strategies, but chain them together to create near impossible runs. But beyond Tronic, some of the most extraordinary runs are found on very unordinary maps. Let me explain. Surf Blackheart, created by the former Tronic champion Otter, is the closest in style to Tronic, together comprising the extremely small subcategory of fall maps within tech. The map is absolutely insane, and at full speed almost makes Tronic look like child's play. The Blackheart was never added as a map to KSF, and instead a bonus for Surf Revolution. When Sam received the map submission and eventually decided, he rejected the map on the grounds that it wasn't Surf. And he was right. Blackheart isn't Surf within our current conception of the game mode, and neither is the Tronic World Record route. A distinct focus on downward maneuvering separates these maps from everything else we've seen. You could argue that they are fall maps with surf and b-hop elements. 
but these full speed runs on Blackheart completed by a select few surfers like Otter and Dawn are astounding and 100% unique. If we want to continue to perfect this amazing game mode in the same way we perfect our runs and strategies, we may have to venture into the places we least want to look. What would this look like? A tier 2 Tronic or tier 3 Blackheart perhaps? While I don't think the Blackheart should have been or should be added to KSF, as it is so far outside of surf convention, I would applaud the next mapper that breaks barriers like Blackheart did. Perhaps one day we'll collectively decide to embark on our next adventure, plunge into the darkness, and start the next chapter of surf history. What about the future of Tronic? First, Otter developed this insane strategy at the map's end. I won't even pretend to understand how this would be set up and whether it's run viable, but Second, the run was absolutely obliterated by our resident Tasser Batman. Traditional Tasses are human inputs recorded and linked together. Batman programmed his own task tool that creates optimal inputs and has been using it to open new doors and strategies for servers. His Tronic run is definitely worth a watch and features a new technique spinning left instead of right into the long white spin. This is a faster fall and requires less units than the conventional route, making it very profitable. There are currently two main servers going for the record, Marble and Pietu, as well as Birchall, Otter, and Nim, who aren't as active but have recently practiced the map. In fact, Marble just recently set an insane rank 7 run in the middle of a tournament. Although, Marble's got oh, the he's directed! The participants were given only 10 minutes to run the map. Plus, he's learned the new waterfall strategy, be hopping the white outline of the ramp for more speed. Pietu is also very close behind, failing a run ahead of world record just a couple months ago. He uses a new skip showcased by Batman and is just short of clearing the half pipe, 0.4 seconds ahead of world record. Lastly, please go follow Sinsa at twitch.tv slash He's recently done a couple streams and we should show him some love. Thank you so much for watching. Credits to all the folks that reached out and offered to help. And apologies to those that offered to help but didn't ultimately hear from me. After I don't know okay pointed me towards HLAE, I used the replays and footage I had to make all the cinematics, and I didn't want to bother anyone more than necessary. Also, huge thanks to the folks that gave me feedback on the first draft of this video. The original was missing some key information, and this wouldn't have been possible without you. If you enjoyed this, you're going to love my other two world record history videos, Cyberwave and Omnific. And I'm going to post a single correction video for all three of these, as well as a channel update very soon, so stay tuned for that. And as always, good luck sliding those triangles.